Shabbat Shalom, everyone. Shabbat Shalom. So we're going to sing a couple Ugandan melodies to open our service tonight. Um, and we're, we are waiting for Rabbi Nambi to come, but she, but she just flew in. <laughs> So she gave me the Lugandan words, but I don't think we're going to try them. But they're on your song sheet, so you could keep them in mind for next time. I'm sure she'll teach us how to say it. Um, you can't hear me that well, Karen, you said. All right, well, all right. All right, we're going to start with Hine Matov, and then we're going to sing Ame Yisrael Chai. So here's how it goes. Hine Matov, umana. everyone. Shabbat, Shabbat shalom. shalom. We want to welcome you to our outdoor service <laughs> indoors. Uh, I think we made the right call. The air conditioning's better in here. Much better in here. Um, you know, I, I, I was sold on coming to California because of the weather here. <laughs> it's no different than home right now. But uh, it's great to be with everyone. And um, it's, a, it's great to be inside tonight. <laughs> We're going to continue our service as we uh, light the Shabbat candles. Uh, Lori and Russ, would you come up and, and help us with that and Kiddush? And as they come up, we're going to come on up. We're going to take a moment, and, and even though they're not really, you know, they're just getting settled in, we want to say a a, a wonderful welcome to uh, Rabbi Shoshana Nambi and her daughter Imuna. They, they literally just got here, and so we're giving them a night off. Uh, so, but please, please take, some, uh, take the opportunity after services to, to meet them and, and get to know them. And hi, guys. Hi. Will you uh, lead us in lighting the candles? And maybe you'll. Uh, read here. We're going to continue, folks, on page, um, where are we? You know, you take a few days off and you forget it. 
We are on page two. Pa oh, yeah, yeah, page two. There you go. You want to read maybe one of these first? As, As these Shabbat, Shabbat candles, candles give light, light to all who behold, behold them, them, so may we, we by our, our lives, give light, light to all who behold us. us. As their, their brightness reminds us of the generations of Israel who have kindled, kindled light, so, so may we, we in our, our own, own day be among, among those who kindle light. Shalom. Shalom. And now, stay on up here. Stay up here. We're going to do Kiddush on page five. And we'd like to invite, do we have anybody here who's under the age of 107? <laughs> no, no. If we have anybody who considers themselves to be a non-adult, come on up. Hey, do you want to come up and get some juice? If you want, you could come. Jackson is coming. Maya can come. If Kayla wants to come. She doesn't want to. This is definitely a non-adult. Well, Muna, thank you for joining us. Well, page five. Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Barei Peri HaGafen Baruch Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam Asher Kishanu B'Mitzvotov Verat Savanu Shabbat <laughs> Mm. Well, now that we've said the blessings welcoming in Shabbat, we now turn to that melody from that poem in the 15th century that the mystics in Svat created to welcome Shabbat into their lives. They imagined Shabbat to be a, a beautiful bride that we brought 
into our lives for 24 hours and they were so anxious to greet Shabbat they would run out into the fields. Well, we don't run out to the fields because most of us don't have fields. But we are, we are always ready for Shabbat. You know, in Israel, you're allowed to say Shabbat Shalom beginning on Wednesday afternoon because everybody wants Shabbat to come. I don't know about you, but it was great to celebrate the 4th but it made me think about a lot of things that the fourth represents. It made me a little bit anxious. And I realized that I needed a time of calming, a calm of relaxation. That's what Shabbat's about. So I'm going to invite everybody, just take a deep breath in. Take a deep breath out. And now with joy and with, with divikut, with intentionality, let us turn to page 20 and 21. Sing Lachado D. Verses 1, 2, 5, and 9. And when we reach verse 9, we'll rise as able and turn and face the door and welcome Shabbat metaphorically into our lives. Please join in. up, warming up, warm, cooling off. I don't know. I don't know which way we're going. We're warmed up to prayer and we're cooling off. Spiritually warm, physically cool. I don't know. Maybe socially cool too. We'll go with either. You are. You're going to be warm. Well, we'll continue with our prayer of community. Baruch Hu, page 28.
We'll sing our interpretation of Ma'ariv Aravim, our prayer for the evening. It's the second song on your song sheet, Roll Into Dark, Roll Into Light. of Shema, page 34. seated. Continue with words of Hafta on page 36. And to lead us, I want to call next week's Bar Mitzvah student, Jackson Marks. So Jackson, come on up. Page 36. Vitem Kirushim Lele 
Continue with our song of freedom. It uh, feels particularly relevant this week as we celebrate America's independence, freedom from tyranny, and such. And we sing our prayer of an eternal hope for freedom and redemption. Page 40, Michamot. Take out your song sheets. Thinking about American music, <laughs> found this really good interpretation of Hashki Venu. It's at the bottom of that first side. I won't cry. 
on page 44, we sing our song for Shabbat, Veshamru. Veshamru <laughs> Prayer invites God's presence to suffuse our spirits, God's will to prevail in our lives. Prayer may not bring water to parched fields, nor mend a broken bridge, nor rebuild a ruined city. But prayer can water an arid soul, mend a broken heart, rebuild a weakened will. We'll enter into our Amida, our blend of communal and private prayer on page 46. Sing the first few blessings together and then take some time for our own private prayer. If you're able, I invite you to please rise. Page 46. Sarah, 
You are holy, your name is holy, and those who are holy praise you every day. Blessed are you, Adonai, the holy God. On page 62, middle couplet, Yehi Ularatzon. Yehi
Well, I am so thrilled to introduce tonight's speaker. In fact, I'm kfelling, which literally means bursting with pride. <clears throat> because besides for our speaker being the co-founder, CEO, and president of Caribou Biosciences, a genome editing company, all that information I got off of Wikipedia, by the way, Rachel Horowitz is also a former bat mitzvah student of mine from bay, way back when I was a baby canter at, uh, in Austin, Texas. And just so you know, Maya Jackson, she did a great job at her bat mitzvah. Rachel, her husband Felix, and their wonderful daughter Naomi joined Beth Am a few years ago, and we are so fortunate to have them as part of our community, and it is so great to have you here tonight. So I welcome you, Rachel, to our Bima. Thank you so much, Patricia. <laughs> You're welcome. Uh, good Shabbos. It is my tremendous honor to share a few thoughts with you this evening about this week's Torah portion. And as she just gave it away, I'm particularly tickled because the first time I ever had the opportunity to share my perspective on a Torah portion was when I became a bat mitzvah and Cantor Shbal was a member of the clergy on the bima with me that day. I'm delighted by her invitation to repeat that experience tonight. However, we will not talk about how many years ago that first instance was. <laughs> Before I begin, I'd like to acknowledge the teachings of rabbis Jonathan Sachs, Amiel Hirsch, and Philip Rice, which have all influenced what I'll be sharing today. So this week's Torah portion is called Karach. Where are we in the Torah? Moses has successfully led the Jews out of Egypt and through the worst of the wilderness, and they're living in relative prosperity as they await entry into the land of Israel. The Parsha kicks off with Korach, a member of the tribe of Levi, instigating a mutiny against Moses and Aaron. He and his followers argue that all members of the Jewish community are holy and should have the ability to communicate with God. The Torah says in Numbers 16.3, they combined against Moses and Aaron and said to them, quote, you have gone too far, for all the community are holy, all of them, and Adonai is in their midst. Why then do you raise yourselves above Adonai's congregation? Candidly, it's a hard parsha to read. Those who led the mutiny in their families are actually swallowed up whole by the earth on which they stood. Then 250 men who participated in the mutiny were killed by fire. A plague then killed an additional 14,700 Israelites. Following that, God commanded that a chieftain from each of the 12 tribes bring a staff to the tent of meeting, one of which was brought by Aaron. The following day, Moses found that Aaron's staff, and only Aaron's staff, had sprouted, blossomed, and borne almonds. The staffs were then presented to the Israelites. God then commanded Aaron and his offspring to be responsible for the priestly duties that they, and no one else, must undertake. There are two different ways I'd like to reflect on this portion of the Torah. The first is that this story reminds us that within our community, we must acknowledge that we each bring different strengths and each therefore have different responsibilities to provide, contribute, or lead in the context of our community. Now, few of us have the, the voice of God as Aaron did to tell us what our role is, and therefore most of us spend a big fraction of our lives figuring out where we best fit and how we best contribute. The second level on which I'd like to reflect on this story is global. I believe that this parsha is also a key reminder of the importance of Jewish particularism and that the world is better for having Jews and Judaism, including in our ancestral home in the land of Israel. Perhaps in another year or another time, this would be a boring and perfunctory statement to make. And yet today, almost nine months to the day since October 7, this statement takes on profound additional weight. Prior generations inherently understood and valued Jewish particularism and the centrality of the Jewish people, in part thanks to the consistent existential threats posed by various governments and people over many decades and centuries. Time and time again, Western liberalism has not proved to be protective of the Jewish people. This is perhaps most pronounced by the example of early 1900s Germany one of the most leading Western cultures of its time, where Jews played prominent roles across society, industry, and academia. 
This was, of course, followed by the Holocaust, carried out by Nazi Germany. In recent days, I've spent quite a bit of time reflecting on the experiences of my grandfather and his parents, who were part of the early reform movement in Berlin and who all survived the Holocaust in Berlin. They went from being well-respected members of society who ran a family business that paved roads in Germany to losing nearly everything. My great-grandfather spent time in a concentration camp while my grandfather served many years of forced slave labor. In the midst of all of this, my great-grandmother, who was not Jewish, took on an extraordinary role for her family. Along with many other non-Jewish women married to Jewish men, my great-grandmother participated in what is now called the Rosenstrasse protest, literally named for the street on which it took place in Berlin in 1943. These women protested the deportation of their husbands and family members, the only such public mass protest against the Nazis as far as I can tell, and it ultimately resulted in the safe release, rather than deportation, of nearly 1,800 Jews, including my great-grandfather. At a time when Jews were literally powerless, politically, financially, or otherwise, to protect or advocate for themselves, extraordinary people like my great-grandmother risked everything to fight for the Jewish people. Fast forward to today. Post-October 7, I find it beyond befuddling that some of the loudest anti-Zionist voices today are coming from within the reformed Jewish movement. How did we get here? Perhaps one piece of the puzzle is that my generation of American-born Jews and those younger than me have been raised in an environment of relative peace and incredible prosperity, making it hard to imagine that the existential threats that our grandparents, great-grandparents, and earlier ancestors routinely faced could ever happen again. Now, I was careful to say American-born Jews. I encourage any of you to speak with my husband, Felix, who was born in the Soviet Union and was lucky to leave there in 1989 and come to the US with his family in 1990. No one has to convince him that the risk of crushing anti-Semitism is real after his and his family's direct experiences in the Soviet Union. Today, too many of my peers seem to be abandoning any sense of Jewish particularism or a specific love of the Jewish people in favor of universalism and an expectation that Western liberalism is the solution to the protection of the Jewish people and to a better world. At the end of the day, I believe we each must start from a very simple place. We must believe the following. I am a member of the Jewish community, and I have a responsibility to other Jews. Following that, we can disagree on many things, including how to do Jewish or politics here in the US or Israel. I believe Parsha Korach is a kick in the pants for us this year, a call to action for Jews to simultaneously embrace our individual responsibilities to contribute uniquely to our community, as well as our collective responsibility to contribute to the Jewish people, our continuity, and the state of Israel. How do we bolster our collective identity as Jews and embrace our unique role as a people in this world? Let's turn again to the Torah portion. I'd like to read the following that Rabbi Jonathan Sachs once said of this parsha. Quote, when we read the story of Korach, our attention tends to be focused on the rebels. We don't give as much reflection as we might to the response of Moses. Was it right? Was it wrong? It's a complex story. As the Ramban explains, it is no accident that the Korach rebellion happened in the aftermath of the story of the spies. So long as the people expected to enter the promised land, they stood to lose more than they could gain by challenging Moses' leadership. He had successfully negotiated all obstacles in the past. He was their best hope. But now, a whole generation was condemned to die in the wilderness. Now they had nothing to lose. When people have nothing to lose, rebellions happen." End quote. So let's apply this thinking to today, post-October 7. What do we, reformed Jews living in America, have to lose? I believe we have so very much to lose. The situation in the Middle East currently poses an existential threat to the state of Israel and to the lives of so many Jews. The future of our collective sacred community relies on each of us to heed the teachings of this week's Torah portion. Another key theme of this parsha is the role of leadership, and the story examines both the mutineers and Moses and finds them wanting. 
It is a deeply honest reflection of the humanity of the individuals involved. In closing tonight, I ask each of you to consider what leadership role you will play in our community for the Jewish people now and going forward. Shabbat Shalom. Thank you, Rachel. Continue our service with our prayer for healing. It's on the back of your song sheets. This week in particular, we're sending prayers for healing to Ginny Anderson, Nathan Barron, Malta Benuzilo, Diane Denenberg, Mark Cohn, Ron Cote, Abigail Covert, Bracha Bat Devora, Toby, Toby Elman, Marty Gelman, Selena Glader, Diana Guthoner, Harold Hodes, Moritz Huppert, Aaron Levinson, Norman V. Martello, Sophia Palsban, Harvey Rabin, Devorah Bat Razel, Bobby Rosencrans, Steve Shane, David Baruch Ben Simona, and Larry Wortman. If there's somebody that you're thinking of in need of prayer, uh, pray, in needing of healing of body or soul, I invite you to share their names at this time. Continue with a prayer for Israel. Eternal God, receive our prayers for the peace and security of the state of Israel and its people. Spread blessing upon the land and upon all who labor in its interest. Protect Israeli soldiers as they defend our people against missiles and hate. Protect the innocent among the Palestinian people that they may be safe and free from death and injury. Inspire Israel's leaders to both defend our people and follow the ways of righteousness and compassion. Remove from the hearts of our people fear, hatred, malice, strife, and vengeance. May the Jewish people scattered throughout the earth stand strong in solidarity with the state of Israel in times of war and peace. And may they be infused with the ancient hope of Zion. 
May our people be encouraged by the symbol of Jerusalem as the eternal city of peace. May the state of Israel be a blessing to all its inhabitants and to the Jewish people everywhere. May she be a light unto the nations of the world. We say together. Amen. Amen. Continue with Alenu Lishabach, page 282. If you're in Abel, I invite you to rise. Alenu Lishabach, Laton Hakul, Latet Gidulal Yotzeir Breshit, Shelo Asanu Kegoye Haransot, Velo Samanu Kemish Bechot Adama. Shelo samachel kenu kahem Vekor alinu kekol hamonam Vaanachnu korim Umishtachavim umodim Lifne melech malche hamachim Hakadosh baru Page 294. As our prayers on this Shabbat come to a close, we take a moment to remember those who are no more, family and friends who made our lives richer by their presence. Remember especially one who has been taken from our midst most recently, Richard Pepper Mint, brother-in-law of Abigail, Abigail Tamara on July 3rd. Remember those whom Shloshim has observed, Taya Birukova and Nancy Karmazi. We also remember those whose Eurotites occur at this time. Grace Anisman, Ralph Barkoff, Philip Bennett, Abraham Berman, Gertrude Polly Berman, Esther Birnbaum, Lisa Brown Flagg, Madeline Carmel, Herbert Cohn, Jimmy C Costanzo, Carol Dorshkin, Eileen Eisenson, Rhea Elaine, Rhea Elaine Zins, Charles Fanwick, Marilyn Friedman, Alan Harvey Gobati, Daniel Greenberg, William D. Harris, Yetta Hainick, Ruth Hope, Joseph Carroll, Etta Klein, Francis Evita Crone, Lawrence Lasky, Samuel Lehman, Ralph Laindorf, Ruth Laindorf, Yetta Levinson, Sydney Levin, Meyer Levinson, Elise Levy, Dorothea Levy, Mortimer Lewis, Florence Lillian Stein, Yelizaveta Livsitz, Francis Martyr, Leslie Margulies, Susan McIntosh Lloyd, Kathy Mead, Samuel Mel, Charles Milenko, Stanley Millman, Jackie Morgan, 
Laura Newman, Doris Renwick, Abe Rovell, Ruth Rovell, Mir Rubenstein, Arthur Seidman, Paulina Schaefer, Leonard Shapiro, Rosa Sh Shinus, Lindy Sherry, Oded Stokelman, Robert Martin Silver, Bennett Steinmuller, Anthony S Sterp, Rita Stock, Marlene Strober, Sylvia Sussman, Leah Tomsky, Yaakov Vexler, Vanya Vilinskaya, Belson Jack Weinstein, Branch White, Rosamund Weiland, Townley Wolf Jr., Murray Zuckerman. There is a name that has been mispronounced or one who has not been mentioned whom you're remembering this evening. We invite you to say that name aloud so that we might honor their memory as well. The memories of all of them are with us. Our griefs and sympathies are mingled. So we praise God and pray for the coming for God's sovereignty. We invite those who are able in body or spirit to please rise. Yit gedal v'yit gedash shemeraba v'yama divra chirute v'yamlich machute v'chayechon v'yimechon v'chayedchol beit Yisrael v'agalav izman kari v'imru amen. Yehe shemei rabam v'arach le'olam ome amaya. Yeparach v'ishtabach v'pa'ar v'tromam v'nasei. V'tadar v'talev v'talal shemei rekudesha b'richu. Leila min kol b'rchata v'shirata. Tush b'chata v'nechmata. Damiram b'yama v'imru amen. Yehe shalama rabba min shemaya v'chayim aleinu v'al kol Yisrael v'imru amen. Ose shalom b'yama who ya se shalom, aleinu ve'okho Yisrael, v'imru, amen. May God who makes peace in the highest of heavens, may God make peace for us, for Israel, and for all humanity, as together we say, amen. Please be seated. It is said in our tradition that one of the ways in which we remember those who have gone before us is to give tzedakah. We give tzedakah as a way of expressing our desire to bring the world into a place of wholeness and healing, something that we imagine that our ancestors, those whom we loved, did for us and for others as well. As you know, that each month we have a different um, Sadaka project that we support here at Beth Am. We, we, um, uh, we exchange, one, one month we do a, a local uh, cause, and the next month we do something in Israel. Uh, this month, our Tzedakah box causes Jewish Family and Children's Services. It is the problem-solving center for residents of San Francisco, Marin, so Sonoma, Santa Clara, and San Mateo counties. Jewish Family and Children's Service, JFCS, is a lifeline for children, families, and older adults. We all know the good work that JCFS does. We'd like to encourage you to be as generous as you can this month to helping them help the community. Uh, you can make a donation uh, via Venmo uh, at, uh, at Beth-Am. Uh, you can do it um, online at our um, website at bethom.org forward slash payment. Uh, you can make a check. Uh, you can even give cash in our Sadaka box. Uh, but we hope that you will give generously this month and help that important organization. Um, we have uh, just a couple, that's one announcement. We have uh, two other really important announcements. One is please consider joining us, if you haven't done it before, to join our Torah study tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. In, in the Beit Kahila. And then afterwards at 10.30, we're going to have uh, a Torah minion service. We'd love to have you join us as well. We'll read Torah and do a little bit more studying. A and then finally, please be with us two, well, be with us every Shabbat, but especially be with us two weeks from tonight when we have an opportunity to formally welcome Rabbi Shoshana Nambi and her daughter Imuna into our congregation. We're going to have, God willing, it's going to be beautiful outside, nice and cool. We'll be outside, and we're going to have a festive oneg in, in their honor afterwards. So please, please join us this, uh, in two weeks from tonight. And now, Cantor, what are we going to do? <laughs> no. What do you want to do? We're going we're gonna to sing a special song for the day. So um, if everybody, uh, do, we, do we usually stand for our closing song? Sure, we can. Yeah, please stand. And it's right here. It's on the back of your, of your page. E? 
G G G G G G G G G G G G I noticed that in the verses to the, to the uh, song or the chorus that California is mentioned twice. Yeah. Right? I never recognized that before. Uh, we'd now like you to understand why. Now I understand yeah. why, right, because of the heat. Um, <laughs> we'd like to uh, conclude our service this, this evening. Uh, we'd like to invite Rabbi Shoshana Nambi and her daughter Imuna to come up and join us for Kiddush, I'm sorry, for Motsi. And then we yeah. get to. Like, she's formal. She's official. <laughs> All right. All right. Nobi. And then a special thank you. Look, Ben Lloyd, it's so beautiful yeah, to have your oboe playing tonight. It really, it's really nice. Thank you. And of course, Russell, thank you also. All right. Here we go. Oh, what a beautiful color. Baruch Atah Adonai Eloheinu Melech HaOlam HaMotzi Lechem Min Amen. Shabbat shalom, everybody. Shabbat shalom.